right, welcome, Gerge. Thanks for joining us for Lead Time Chats. It's great to be here. Um, so we want to dive right into the topic. Um, topic is really this, this decision that I think a lot of engineers face at some point in their career and just, do I want to be a manager? Should I go into management? So maybe we can just start off with hearing a little bit about how that was for you. Yeah, for, for me, it was a few different steps. First was when I worked at Skype, we introduced Scrum. We had this big thing and people became Scrum Masters. I became a Scrum Master. And at first I was like, ah, being a Scrum Master, like I just want to code, man. Like, why can I not just code? And I, I, I spent two weeks being a Scrum Master and I felt, wow, I'm helping the team. Like the team actually, our velocity increased. And mm -hmm. I was doing all these non-coding tasks and the whole team seemed to do better. And I was like, hold on. So <laughs> what, I, what I did was that really useful. And that was, the, I think that was a start of me thinking, huh, there's something here. And, and people, we always rotated being the scrum master every two weeks or every month or so for like a year. It was this long project. Mm -hmm. And I kind of ended up being scrum master more frequently because I kind of enjoyed it. Some people hated it, by the way, they didn't want to do it, but I was like, I really liked helping the team get better. So that was kind of so step just one. The, the insight of non-coding stuff can be useful and, and help help the team. Yeah, but but I was still at the point where I like, I don't want to be a manager. I just want to be an engineer. Like it's kind of being a manager is kind of lame. And I think part of it was I, de <laughs> I didn't really have good managers. I didn't really look up to them. In fact, at, at that time, like I, I, th I liked my manager until promotion mm -hmm. time came up and they gave me feedback that I totally didn't expect. Uh, they were telling me I'm doing mm -hmm. great. And then I got like an average review or something like that. So then the, the, the way I kind of became a manager almost like accidentally is I joined a startup. I joined Skyscanner. Mm -hmm. They recruited me as a first hire for an acqui hire. They, they, they bought a tiny company with two people and I was the first employee and mm -hmm. they said we're, they're going to leave us alone for a year. And then my new manager who was a younger guy than me and probably less experienced, he told me like, all right, Gergay, uh, we need you to build a mobile app. So I started building a mobile app. And at some point I was like, they were like, can you go faster? I'm like, I'm going really fast already. They're like, well, you should hire a team. And I was like, okay. They were like, so we looked at each other like, okay. And they're like, yeah, hire a team. <laughs> and I was like, You're I, like I don't know where's how to my hire engineer? a team. <laughs> and, and then my, my manager told me at the start, guys, like, you know, I'll tell you a secret. Two years ago, I didn't know how to start a company, but I did it. I know you can do it. So mm. I, I became this accidental manager, no training, no support. I hired three people. I probably, I, I did a lot of mistakes. So my, my first mistake was uh, I was on a call with a person and I got really enthusiastic and I really liked this person. I told them like, you know what? We're going to go to the next step. We'll go to the next interview. And I hung up and I started to reflect on my notes and I realized this person is a no-go. And mm. I, I asked my manager, like, what should I do? I told this guy, we're going to go to the next step, but we, we shouldn't. It's a waste of time. And, and he told me like, look, like management is sometimes about listening to your gut. And so I, I did all these rookie mistakes. So that was my kind of second step. I, I became an accidental manager. And I think I was not a really good manager. I, I tried to be, but I never had the kind of even thought, time to think about these things. And mm -hmm. finally, when I joined Uber, I actually joined from this position, which I, I like to think of as a tech lead position uh, as a senior engineer. I actually wanted to be a tech lead at Uber, but they said, we don't have those openings, just senior engineer. I was like, fine, it's, it's Uber. This was in 2016 when Uber could do nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And in, in six months time, I found myself doing managerial duties because uh, I've done it before. And I, I told my manager, look, I'm doing the job as a manager already. I want to become a manager if there's an opportunity. And he was overloaded. He had 30 reports. So uh, that's oh, how I became a manager. And the great thing about Uber, why I'm super, super help, uh, thankful for, they didn't let me be a manager just like that. I had to go through an apprentice program. They, I had a mentor. I had I had proper training for the first time. I actually, we talked with a peer group of about one-on-ones. It wasn't just me reading blogs. So that's my short story on, on management. It's not everyone is, is lucky enough. I think that apprentice program made a huge difference. And Uber did this apprentice program, funny enough, because they knew that they were full of just bad managers because they were first-time managers. Mm -hmm. I think 50 or 60% of managers at Uber at the time were first-timers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a pretty common journey either for companies or for individuals to have this like accidental manager and make a ton of mistakes then be like okay I we really need to like set set some structure and some training in place but I want to go back to one thing you said which is that um you came into it thinking like management is lame like where does that come from 
I, I never really looked up to my managers. I, I Well, first of all, I never understood. So here's the thing. None of my managers up to that point were transparent about what being a manager is. And this is something I, I changed later. I actually had a lot of people who reported to me or multiple people go into management knowing what to expect. I didn't know what management was. I, all, all I saw is I have this like once a year feedback. My manager is kind of, you know, like I, I had a manager at, at uh, Microsoft who there was this guy on the team who was just really hostile to other people. He was yelling with someone and I complained to him about him. And I know other people complained about him as well. And my manager said, leave it with me. Nothing happened. And, and to me, this was management. It was like, well, you know, he's probably getting paid more than I do, but I don't look up to this person. I don't want to be mm. this person. It, it just didn't seem, uh, I didn't like, and I think the biggest mistake my managers did, and I think the biggest mistake managers do, they don't talk about what they do, how they, you know, how they help the team, what their goals are. I, I didn't know. So I, I knew what software engineering was. I knew I had a lot to grow there. And I was like, I just want to be a software engineer. Mm -hmm. And so having those managers that, you know, you didn't look up to, how did that impact how you led or aspired to be a manager when you became one? So this was really interesting because at, at this, and, and Skype was a good example on, on this. When I became a scrum master, I, I started to think, hmm, maybe this management thing, maybe <laughs> one day I, I kind of might. Uh, and I, I started to observe my manager. So I actually, I did start to ask, hey, what are you doing? Like I'm the scrum master, but what, what are you mm. doing? What is our dynamic? Uh, and as part of this, I started a notes pad as well. The first time I, I didn't get promoted, even though I never asked for it, but it, it, it felt, it hurt because my colleague who was honestly a selfish, a selfish person a little bit, and he was really loud, he got promoted because he asked mm -hmm. for it. Uh, I started to make a note of the things that I hated about my managers. Uh, and I, I wrote there, <laughs> I had a manager who, I had a manager who seemed to care. He, uh -huh. I, I like to call this person a don't care manager. Every time I asked feedback, he said, you're doing great. I support what you do. Mm. You're amazing. When it came to performance review time, he was like, mm, yeah, your your performance was was middle of the 60%. Microsoft, we had this, this ladder from one to five. I got a three and I was asking, him, but you told me I'm doing great. And he didn't have any answers. And I realized mm. he just didn't care. He just kind of went with the flow. So this was mm. one thing I didn't want to do. And then I had a manager later who was the opposite. He really cared. He micromanaged me to an absolute extent. And, I, <laughs> and whenever there were some nights where I, I, I was kept awake, I, I was told to lead this project. I thought I was doing good, but I told my manager there's a small chance we're going to be late by two days, but I've got it under control. He took it away from me. He stepped in. He was like, oh, I'm stepping in. And, and I, I had mm. this list of the things I hated about my managers. I also yeah, had what else was later. on that list? The two biggest ones were micromanaging, uh, not, not uh, uh, letting an abusive team member roam on the team and not firing him. He should have been fired. Mm. This person, like this was back in before, you know, some of the, uh, there was no me too. There was no any of this. It, it just felt wrong. This person was uh, abusive and, and eventually a, a later manager did get rid of him uh, or, mm -hmm. you know, but that, that was uh, on the things uh, and, and uh, kind of this not talking about performance. So I, mm -hmm. I left both of my teams because my managers never talked about my career. And I only realized after the performance review that I really would have wanted to, to have a chance at promotion, but I never talked about it. Mm -hmm. So the, these so were the top three. And, and, so and later I started to add some, some things that I also liked. One of my managers who, who was a micromanager, he was really strong technically and he had a really high bar on the team. I liked that. I loved being mm. part of the team in that sense. So it's interesting because a lot of my managers, they, they were not black and white, by the way, and all of them were good people. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, But there were things that I didn't like about them and the things that I liked about them. And I, I, when I became a manager, I had this list already and I vowed that I'm not going to do the things that I was really pissed off about. Mm -hmm. So that kind of helped guide what kind of manager you wanted to become. And then when my, my, you made manage... My managerial style, like I, th I think the <laughs> biggest influence is I just wanted to avoid the things that I either I got really upset about or I saw people around me got upset about over the years. And I, I think honestly, like just mm -hmm. this thing, the fact, I think I, I did an okay job with that. But because of this, I probably was already the top 20% of managers because I knew what I did what I, 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 every day. I, when I became manager, I had this list and I looked at it and I asked for feedback and I, I wanted to make sure and I checked in with people. I told them that if you ever feel I'm micromanaging you, tell me, please. Mm. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. Or if you yeah, feel I don't care about your career, tell me because that, that's on me. Uh, like I, I, I should be caring and you know, I'm sorry in advance, but I might forget about it. Yeah, and that's huge that you're asking those people that you're managing to 
bringing, bringing them into the process of helping you grow as a manager. It's like, here are all the things I don't want to do. Um, give me feedback and feedback immediately. Like, I would love for you to give me that feedback if you do feel like I'm doing any of these things. What about yeah. for people on your teams? You've managed, you've been a manager, you've managed a lot of people. And I presume a lot of them are also facing this decision of, do I want to go into management, right? How do you help them think through that? Um, what are some, some advice or tips that you, you give them? So I typically have two, like I have a two-step strategy. First, I, I want to scare them away from it. Uh, I, I, I really think you should only go into management if you are up for the challenge and if you're up for an uphill battle, if you're okay with doing more work for less money. Uh, mm. And one thing that Uber did really well, and I think a lot of companies should follow, when I became a manager, a lot of people assume that as a manager, you get more money, uh, you, you get more information, more prestige, more power, right? There, there's, as a manager, you will always have a power dynamic, like it or not, because you, mm -hmm. you, you, you have a say in the performance review. At Uber, my salary did not change. My bonus went down because I, I, I had, was, we were on the same level. And again, I think, you know, you worked at organizations that have levels, but some don't. Uh, my bonus mm -hmm. target stayed the same, but I was now compared against managers. And I, on, as a senior engineer, I was top of the band. I was I, I would have yeah. been promoted to the next level pretty quickly, probably. As a manager, I was more on the bottom <laughs> of the band. So technically, I left money on the table. But I, I really like that this was the case because it made me reflect, do I want to stretch myself and do what felt like a lot of extra work for this. And I had people who later went into this and, and they had mm -hmm. the same conversation with them. And I told them like, you should answer this. And if the answer is you can go back and it's, it's, there's no shame in it, but I really think people like the best managers are people who would do it for the same amount of money. And it's yeah. not because of the money. So that's so what I tried to scare, this, scare them. The structural setup that it's not the default next promotion, but right? you actually need to want it and make that change and take the, the pay cut and the because you, you're moving laterally, right? You're moving from the technical yeah. side to the people side. And, and, and also people, engineers on my team, they were making, some people were making more than me. They had higher bonuses. I mm -hmm. helped promote people to a level above me and I saw their salaries as well. But I, I think if you cannot reconcile this, you should probably not be manager because I was actually happy. I pushed for those people to get it because I think they deserve it. They were better engineers than I ever was. And, mm -hmm. and I was really happy for them. Uh, they, of course, didn't know. So some of them even complained you know, when they got the thing. But that, 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 that's part of it. I, I think it's a really interesting challenge. So, so first, I, I was scared people away because, like, are you committed? Are, are you ready to give this a proper go? I think you should go into management if you're ready to give it a year, at least. You can't go into mm -hmm. thinking, I'll, I'll see in six months. You, you need to commit it. And once they, once, they, once they are there, and typically people, the right reasons to go into management are to, to learn more, to stretch yourself, to think for your long-term career. Uh, the, the wrong reasons are, I want more power. Uh, I, I want to have my voice heard. I want more money. It's, you're going to burn out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to really last. And you're not going to be a good manager. It sounds like, so you're saying that you want to make sure people want it, but that's paired with something you said earlier, which, that, which is that on your team, you really share what management is, what you're doing. And so that people want, people have visibility into what your job is as a manager. And yep. they point to that and say, I want to do that. Yeah. And I, I, I would point out also the things that I do, the limit, limitations that I had, for example, when it came to pay rises or, or promotions or performance, I made it clear what my input was. For example, I did mm -hmm. not control salaries. I, 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 I did. I had an input where I tried to represent people fairly, but there was a year where everyone on my team got 10% pay rise because centrally it came. And I told people, this is not for me. This is central. I have. I, it could have been zero and I, I would have not had mm -hmm. that. I didn't have control over promotions. We had a promotion committee. So I, I told people clearly that I'm going to tell them you know, if I support them. And if I don't support mm -hmm. them, I'll tell them where the gap is. But, but we're there. And there was a person on my team who did not get promoted. I think he should have gotten promoted. I actually went all the way. There was, a, there was some mistake in the, in the process, some structural hiccup. I went all the way. I couldn't tell this person, obviously, but I, I went all the way to the head of the promotion committee at Uber. And he also admitted it, but he couldn't reverse it. Mm -hmm. And I was in this weird situation where I needed to own a decision where there was nothing to own. There was no, the feedback was, I'm sorry, we messed up the process, but we cannot fix it because we cannot have mm -hmm. exceptions. And it was a really awkward time because as manager, the, the difficult thing is you need to, you, you cannot say, oh, the company does this. You are the company, you represent it. So there's there's challenges there. But yeah. once I scare people and they're still interested, uh, then I, I also start to support them. So I, I do, mm. one of the things that I did for a new manager that I wish I would have had, I actually put together uh, with them, but a lot of it was my input, a checklist 
of things mm -hmm. to do, which people say don't do a checklist, but for new managers, it is a great checklist. And th things I had on the checklist, I had we had areas. So I, I looked at our manager competencies and I added some stuff that I think managers should also do. For example, build trust with your team. And I, I, I did activities. For example, I want you to know personal facts about every single person of your team. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you about it. Uh, next one mm. was, I, I want you to lead by example on something specific. And, and they had to tell me what it is. So I did activities where I didn't tell them what to do, but I told them mm -hmm. what I expect the output to be. And at some point, I'll probably share this list because I, I still have it. I yeah. have some to share it. The feedback from this person was that they felt it helped immensely because they finally had a bit of a mm -hmm. gauge. As a new manager, you don't really know how good or bad you're doing. I didn't know it for two years, right. actually. I didn't know if I was a terrible manager or a good manager until we had some anonymous feedback. And the feedback was that I was I was a, a better manager, but you know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you always have room to improve. So I did yeah. that and actually new managers started to use this uh, checklist and, and customizing it. So I think that that really helped. And by the way, one of the things <laughs> just that, that's on my mind, most managers step into management with zero support. Uh, and it's a tragedy. This is why we have managers who burn out. This is manager mm -hmm. why they give up. And I was lucky. My manager, uh, he had 30 reports and and when I became a manager, he told me I could manage this team that I'm on or this other team that has higher business impact. And I told him I want the higher business impact because I'm a go-getter. And he <laughs> then came back to me and said, Gerge, I think you should manage the current team. This is the most stable team. It's got a roadmap. Um, you're set up for success. And on that team, I'm not sure you will be set up for success. Mm. And he took over managing that team, cleaning up a mess there that it, it, in, in the end, it was really difficult to clean up. But this stayed with me. And when I, it was my turn to help a manager on the team, a new manager join, I did the same thing. I gave, gave this person the most stable team with mm -hmm. no problem, the little to no problem with people. And, and it's usually the opposite. Usually managers are put on the, the new managers are on the worst team. So there's, there's so many things that are just common sense and empathy yeah. that you, like, if you have a manager who does it, I, I think I became a better manager because I had a manager who cared. And in return, I also... Like he actually, he did more work, uh, like mm -hmm. for, for, for my old manager, for me to become a manager, he, he put on a lot, a lot of extra work and he didn't have to do it, but it was the right thing to do. Yeah. I feel like the transition into management is already so bumpy, right? And you're already struggling with like, I'm not coding. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. And so what I love about the checklist is like, they're very doable things. They kind of replace the, like the feedback of like, oh, I, I pushed, I pushed like, I merged five PRs today, right? It's like, no, I checked yeah. off this thing, I asked this person about, their, you know, their family, and now I can go back to Gerge and say, I did it. And so I, I love that that's like, you're creating some, like, you're kind of creating some tasks that are actually, you know, modeling yeah. good management, um, but you're kind of helping smooth that transition. What's, um, I guess just to end, what's one thing that you think most people don't take into consideration when they think about whether or not they want to be a manager? I, I, I'll, I'll say two things. One of them, the loneliness. Suddenly, mm, yeah. when you become a manager, you, you lose all your peers. You cannot talk about them, about the important stuff, the performance, the uncertainty, the fact that you don't know what you're doing. And if you're lucky, you'll have a new team. Uh, if you have managers around, they, they will be your first team. They're going to be people who you can trust. Yeah. A lot of managers will not have this. And, and when, I, when I became a manager at Uber, there was my manager and me and another manager. That, there was the three of us. And I, the only person I could really share stuff with was my manager, but he was super busy. And I, I felt kind of lame complaining all, about all these things. Yeah. By the time uh, like people on my team became managers, we had a group of like seven or eight people. And it was, it was really helpful. But I didn't realize how difficult it would be. And especially when you're promoted from a team that you know, mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. it, it, the relationship changes because again, the, the most important stuff you cannot share. Like people, when I became a manager, someone on my team, I learned about their compensation issues that have been struggling for a while. Another person had a personal issue that I, I didn't know about. And these were all confidential. And suddenly it felt I had this burden. I, I talked about this with my wife, for example. Yeah. Uh, I later <laughs> had a mentor who I could talk with, but suddenly, it was, so that was the first thing. The second thing, which might be specific to, to me and to be big companies, but I think most people think when you become a manager, you can become a, a like a, a boss. Like you, you know, you're, you're one level up, and you can you can uh, tell people what to do. And this is not necessarily in, in in a bad way, but you think that you'll you'll have more decisions. 
what most people don't realize is not management. It will be middle management. You will step up one layer, but now you'll have to balance. The team thinks you're in charge and you're going to sort things out, but you'll have things coming from above and from the side. And it's like a sandwich. Uh, yeah. So you will find yourself having a lot less freedom than you think and a lot more frustration and a lot more balancing. There were times where my, my team thought I was doing a poor job managing. I, I was doing an excellent job, but I had to like protect stuff from above that I couldn't yeah. talk about. So, yeah. um, but, but overall, uh, I would really like uh, one, 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 one last on, on management. I, I might, I hope I'm not scaring people away. I think people <laughs> have the opportunity to go into management. I think you should, if you, especially if you're doubting, if you're cut out for it, because it is like, as long as you're committed to giving it a year, you're going to learn a lot, even if it doesn't work out. Um, mm -hmm. especially when you have good support and, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a learning and it is about people. And there's a parallel with, uh, more senior engineering, like staff and, and principal, which is a lot of things are kind of not the, the hardest things are, are, are the people and the dynamics around people. Yeah. I, I really, really resonated with the, the loneliness. Like I, when I was at medium, I really struggled with that when I became a manager of just like you know, even socially, like, oh, if I invite this one person to this event, do I have to invite everyone or like not wanting to befriend people in a too familiar social context because we switched managers all the time. And so like I could end up managing them and then be in this situ like kind of awkward situation. So that's something that um, I felt like I had to navigate as well. And it, and it is how very How did lonely. you get into management, by the way? What was your transition into just briefly? Mm hmm yeah, I was at Medium. Um, I joined as a mid-level engineer. Um, we didn't have levels when I joined. And then uh, maybe a few years in, we started having this group lead role, um, which is kind of more of a coach mentor advocate role. And uh -huh. it was very much like, um, it was kind of like everyone can choose their own group lead. And so that's kind of how I started um, in the management route, but also led me to coaching, which I did for several years mm, yeah. um, because it's like, you know, I may have, I may be a group lead for six people. Um, two of them are on the team I'm on. Two of them are on some other team. Two of them are, you know, somewhere else in the organization. And so people come to me with problems and I can't just be like, oh yes, that makes sense. Let me go talk to the PM and we'll fix that. Right. Yeah. I have to talk to them, help them clarify the problem and then send them off with some ideas or that they came up with. And I'm like, I don't see the results. I'll hear from it again from them in, in a week and see how it went. And so that was like kind of my introduction to coaching, which um, we can talk about some other time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Yeah, all right, we'll see you next time. Talk later. <laughs>